In this video, I'm going to go over how to use the properties of exponents to simplify some expressions. These are the four examples that I will be going over. One is just a product of two expressions. One contains negative exponents as well as positive, and it's written as a ratio of two expressions. The other it contains problems or two expressions that are themselves being raised to powers. And then finally, we have an expression that has um, positive and negative exponents, and that whole expression is being raised to a negative exponent. So I'm going to use the properties to go over these four examples on the, the next few slides. If you want to click on, if you're watching this on YouTube and not on a handheld device, you should be able to click on one of these expressions and it will take you right to that, that uh, solution. The first expression, I want to multiply 3x squared times 5x to the third. Now notice all I have here and the only operation that's being uh, indicated in this expression is multiplication. I have multiplication between the 3 and the x squared, between the 5 and the x to the third, but then also between these two expressions. So what that means is I am able to, using the associative, or excuse me, the commutative property of multiplication, I can move these pieces around so that I have 3 times 5 times x squared times x to the third. Okay. What allows me to do that again is remember if I have only multiplication that's commutative. Why is that helpful? Well 3 times 5 is 15 and now if I have x squared and I'm multiplying that x to the third we know this will be x to the 2 plus 3. So this product will be 15 x to the fifth. Now one way that we could also look at this problem is to just consider what exponents are telling us. Now if you rewrite 3x squared in terms of what you know writing this out and not having x squared but writing out all exponents this would be 3 times x times x. 5x to the third would be 5 times x times x times x. Now in this example notice once again I can move the 3 times 5 right next to each other and then I'll have x times itself 5 times. Now some students memorize these these properties of adding the exponents but they completely forget why that property exists. The reason we are adding 2 plus 3 is because notice we had 2 x's we had 3 x's we now have a total of 2 plus 3 or 5 x's being multiplied which means we can add their their exponents 2 plus 3. So once again if you just write out all the expressions without exponents you will see you should get the same solution or same expression as your simplified form. The next example has variables that are being raised to both positive and negative exponents and notice all we have is a set of multiplication and division. There's no addition, there's no subtraction. Now when we have negative exponents such as x to the negative 2, the common misconception is that that negative exponent turns this entire x to the negative 2 negative. So students will bring down that negative sign and make this a negative 2x or they'll make this negative x to the second power, but that is not true. If we, and the most efficient and appropriate way to deal with the negative exponents such as x to the negative 2, z to the negative 1, and y to the negative 2, is to take that quantity, that variable, whatever is being raised to that exponent that's negative, and take that entire thing and move it to the other side of the fraction. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to underline everything that's going to move and I'm going to underline everything that stays. Right? So notice everything that stays and what I mean by staying or moving is is it going to be flipped to the other side of the fraction? So y to the fifth that stays because that has a positive exponent. x to the seventh that stays, z to the first that stays. Anything that goes is going to get green so x to the negative two is going to move, z to the negative one and down below y to the negative 2. All those expressions have exponents. 
that are negative. So notice, I'm just going to go through here, x to the negative 2, that has a negative exponent. I can bring that to the other side of the fraction, and that exponent becomes positive. y to the fifth stays. I do not need to address this exponent. It is a positive exponent. z to the negative 1, that is going to move. That has a negative exponent. We want to make that positive. Now look down below. x to the seventh, that stays. That has a positive exponent. Therefore, we can keep it positive by having it remain in the denominator. y to the negative 2, that's going to move. And finally, z, that has a positive exponent. No need to move that. Now that everything has moved, that it is appropriate, we have changed all negative exponents into positive exponents, we can simplify the numerator and denominator. So up top, we have five y's that are being multiplied. We're multiplying that by two more y's. We can add those 5 plus 2 to get y to the 7. Down below, notice we only have multiplication here in between these variables. So I have how many total x's? Well, I have 2. I'm going to add 7 to that. I have 9 total x's that are being multiplied. And the z's, z to the first, z to the first, I have 2 z's that are being multiplied. The next example has two expressions, 3 squared x, which itself is being squared, and we're multiplying that by another, 2x to the third, which itself is being raised to the third power. Notice again, we only have multiplication and exponents. We don't have addition. We don't have a subtract. We don't have subtraction. We can, once everything is situated to, use our properties of exponents. Now what I'm going to do first is look inside, and notice I have 3 squared. I can rewrite that. I don't need that 3 squared. I can rewrite that just as 9x, and then everything else in there is still being raised to the second power. And here I still have 2x to the third, and that itself is being raised to the third power. So when you have this 9x, and it is being raised to the second power, notice what's happening here. If you were to maybe bring this up here, what's happening is you have 9x, and you're multiplying it by itself, 9x. So what you find is you get 9 times 9 and x times x. So the rule that we can use is anything that is being raised to a power, so if it's this whole quantity being raised to a power of 2, then everything that's inside of that quantity gets raised to the power of 2. So you can kind of think of this as being distributing this power of 2 to every individual factor that's being multiplied in here. So this would be 9 to the second power times x to the second power. The same thing happens here, where we have 2x to the third. This whole quantity would be repeated three times, 2x to the third times 2x to the third times 2x to the third, which means each one of these factors would be also multi be multiplied by itself three times. So that means 2 would be multiplied by 2 for a total of 3 times. And x to the third itself would be multiplied times itself 3 times. So this is the power to a power, where you can kind of think about this as distributing the exponent to each factor in that quantity. So let's simplify this. We know 9 squared is 81. x squared is just x squared. 2 to the third power is 8 and x to the third times x to the third. Well, x to the third is being multiplied times itself three times. So if we were to dot, 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 come up here, this would be x to the third, x to the third, x to the third, which we would have how many total x's being multiplied? Three plus three plus three. This would be a total of nine. So we know this is x to the ninth. That follows the general rule if we were also to think of this as just x to the third or x to the three times three. So when you have a power to a power, you can multiply those exponents. And the reason why is because that's going to be repeated addition, right? You're going to be adding three to itself three times. So finally, the last thing we can do here is to think about we have 81. 81 is being multiplied by 8 and then x squared is being multiplied by x to the ninth.
So if we were to rearrange this, 81 times 8, because we only have multiplication here, we can rearrange these factors to make it a little bit easier to see what we're combining and what we're not combining, or what we're multiplying and what we're not multiplying. So if you have 8, 81 times 8, you get 648 x squared times x to the ninth. Two x's are being multiplied by nine x's for a total of 11 x's that are being multiplied. So you get 648 x to the 11. Our last example has this quantity, 4x y to the negative 2. That whole quantity is being raised to a power of negative 1. Now, just as we saw with the last example, if you have a quantity where that whole thing is being raised to an exponent, what we found is that we can take that exponent and quote unquote, which I'll call distribute that, and knowing that that's going to raise each one of these quantities inside, or excuse me, each one of these factors to that power. So that means this would become 4 to the negative 1 times x to the negative 1 times y to the negative 2 but that whole thing is being raised to the negative 1. So again, this is the quantity where we have this expression that's being raised. Everything inside is going to be raised to a power of negative 1. So you can distribute that, making sure every one of those factors gets that exponent. So notice here, when we did negative exponents, we moved it to the other side of a fraction. Remember, 4 to the negative 1 if we wanted to make that a positive value, a positive exponent, then we needed to move it to the other side of the fraction. The most common mistake is for students to think that 4 to the negative 1 somehow becomes negative 4. This is not negative 4. Negative exponents do not make the quantity that it's raising. It doesn't change its sign from a positive number to a negative value. Instead, it takes that value and it would move it to the other side of the fraction. So notice we don't have another side of the fraction here. So what might help is to not write this just as 4 to the negative 1, x to the negative 1, y to the negative 2 to the negative 1, just by itself. But we can write this whole quantity over 1. Because that's, I mean, that's the same thing. You take something, you divide it by 1, it, you're not going to change that quantity. That helps because now I see anything that has a negative exponent, which is this 4 and this x to the negative 1, all right, I can move those to the other side. So I suppose before I do that, maybe we should kind of simplify, or I guess I could do that first. Let's take this 4 to the negative 1 and bring that down. So that would be 4 now to the positive 1. This x to the negative 1, this itself will be brought down to become x to the positive 1. Now, looking at this, y to the negative 2, negative 1, to the negative 1, this isn't quite simplified yet. So what I'm going to do is come over here and think that if I'm raising this power to a power, I can write this as y to the negative 2 times negative 1, which is y to the positive 2. So after I have simplified this quantity, it actually becomes y squared. So I don't actually have to move that quantity to the other side of this fraction. So just writing this in a little bit clearer way, I'm going to have a 1y squared over 4x. Now I wrote this y as a 1y, just so you can see that we have a, a coefficient here, if you will, of 1 fourth. We're taking 1 and dividing by 4. And I wrote x to the first as just x. Now another way that we could have simplified this problem is to think about, well, if you have 4x y to the negative 2, if that whole quantity is being raised to the negative 1, well then we can take this entire quantity and move the entire quantity to the denominator. So that would take this entire expression, move it to the denominator, And instead of that being raised to the negative one, that's now raised to the positive one. So if everything inside is raised, so looking just at the denominator, if I wanted to simplify this, 
if every one of these factors is being raised to the first power, that's just y, or excuse me, 4 to the y, 4 to the first, excuse me, x to the first, and then y to the negative 2, that to the first power, which would just be 1 over 4, x, y to the negative 2, and then finally the last step that we'd have to do is to make this a positive exponent, so we could bring that up top. So that 1y squared or x. A common question is, well, how come when you moved this expression down to the denominator, why did the y to the negative 2 not become positive? Well, what we were doing when we moved this entire expression down to the denominator was we were changing the exponent of this entire quantity. So we're only doing one thing at a time. So the only thing I was doing from this first step here to this second step down here, all I was doing was eliminating this negative exponent, negative 1, and making that a positive. So therefore, nothing else should change. Nothing else should change. The only thing that changes if I'm taking that whole quantity and moving it to the denominator is the exponent on the outside. Then if I want to change or somehow simplify this y to the negative 2, I can do that in a future step, but we don't want to try to do multiple things here at once. What hopefully you notice from this example and, and throughout these all of these examples, if you're asked to simplify using properties of the exponents, is that there are lots of ways to simplify these problems. Lots of ways. There's not just one way to simplify any of these expressions. So keep that in mind. And if you see that either your instructor or a classmate or somebody else solves it differently than you did, that doesn't mean that your way is wrong. There may be a more efficient way, but think about exponents not necessarily as just one way to get that expression simplified.